Let's talk about large language models. If you're developing an application that interacts with a large language model, or you're working on models of your own, there are some terms you should be familiar with. Hi, I'm Jeremy Morgan from CodeCloud, and I'll be your guide through this quick rundown of terms that you should know about large language models. Now, large language models have a pretty simple workflow where you input a prompt of some sort, and the LLM does its magic and spits out an answer. But there are many little knobs you can adjust to change the output portion of that process. Before we talk about those knobs, let's talk about large language model selection. Here are some terms that you might want to know when you're choosing a model. First up, number of parameters or parameter size. Neural networks are roughly modeled after the human brain, kind of. And this size relates to the size of the model's brain. The more parameters, the more it can generate realistic results based on multiple subjects. For example, you can download models from Hugging Face that will run on your local computer, and they have 7 billion, 13 billion, or 70 billion parameters or more. Now, something like ChatGPT is rumored to have 1.7 trillion parameters in their model. So what does that really mean? Well, think of it like a library. If a library has 100 books, that's pretty decent coverage of some topics. If it has 200 books, well, that's even better. And 10,000 books would cover a much wider variety of topics much deeper. Now, it's somewhat similar with large language models. So if you're choosing a model for your application, you can be sure that a 70 billion parameter model is going to be more comprehensive than a 7 billion parameter model. But it's important to know the big trade-off here. The larger the model, the more memory and processing power it will take to run it. So you have to evaluate your hardware accordingly versus what your needs are. Quantization. Now, quantization refers to reducing the precision of the parameters inside the model to save memory and compute costs. For example, we can quantize weights from full 32-bit floating point values down to 8-bit integers without too significant of an accuracy drop. It's sort of like compressing a picture so it will fit on your phone. The image is the same, but the quality is a bit lower, right? Now, quantization techniques are used so that models take up less space when they're stored and they can be accessed faster. So you need to determine what compression level or scheme is acceptable to get the best trade-off between size, speed, and accuracy. Now, context size or context window. This controls how much the model remembers before making a new prediction. Now, a short window is like goldfish memory. A long window is like elephant memory. It determines how much of the previous conversation is remembered as new results are generated. Now, if that memory is too long, it gets confused. So we have to balance that out. And in some cases, too much context can actually be a bad thing. Now, this is sometimes confused with input context size, which is how large of an input you can send to the model in a query. And though it's different, it ties into the overall context size as well. With some models, you can input a few paragraphs for a prompt, and other models let you load like entire scientific papers. Now, here's what you need to know. In general, a larger context size is better, but beware of it being too long. Okay, so we've talked about things you should know about model selection. Now, once you've chosen your model, or if you've built your own model, here are some knobs that you can turn to fine tune the output of the model. Remember, large language models are a probability distribution over sequences of words. So adjusting that process can alter your results, for better or worse. Temperature. Now this randomly skews the probability distribution enabling consistent or surprising outputs. What does that mean? That means low temperature makes conservative predictions. They're focused on the few token choices with the highest individual probability. And this produces consistent and usually more factual responses that are focused on those key prompt details. Now high temperature smooths out that distribution, allowing more randomness and silliness and sometimes a higher temperature will produce more output and more results. Here's what you need to know here. Temperature should be tuned based on your application needs. So do you need it to be really consistent and predictable? Do you need creativity, surprises? Adjust the setting until you get the results you're looking for. Now, top P or nucleus sampling takes the smallest set of the highest probability tokens that sum up to greater than P percent probability. So what the heck does that mean? Well, with a higher top P setting, like 0.8, a model must consider options comprising 80% probability or more before acting, and it ignores the rest. Now, in this case, we'll select anything over 80% probability and ignore the rest. Higher P values will produce more expected, predictable responses because it concentrates probability on the best options. Lower P values allow more diversity in responses, which includes more randomness, which can be useful as well. Top K. 
Then we have the top K parameter. This filters model suggestions down to the top K most likely candidates, and it's an integer. Now by setting a value for K, you're instructing the model to consider only the K most likely tokens. So if you set a top K of three, you're saying only look at the three best tokens. If you set it to one, you only want the very best token and want your results to be repeatable. Set it to 50 and it will pick up from 50 different results and it gives you some diversity. Now top K in general isn't as important as top P in temperature, but it's another knob to turn. Let's load up a large language model with the default settings. And I will say the sky is, and see what it auto completes for us. Notice as I ask over and over, we get the same result. It's the obvious result, right? Now what happens if we tweak the temperature? We can see now with a higher temperature, we get different, more creative results. Buzzwords. <laughs> Finally, here are a couple buzzwords to be aware of. Multimodal. Now this means that the model can handle more than text. It processes images, videos, audio, etc. as well. This is a fairly new addition to models out there and it's extremely useful. RAG or retrieval augmented generation. So this is a method where other sources are mixed into the interface with large language models. Things like data from databases, search engines, and more. Now this tool can hit a search engine to see if anything should be added to your prompt before it goes into the model. And it does the same thing on the back end, and it mixes in information from a search engine into your answer. Now, retrieval augmented generation helps with accuracy and thorough result. This has been an informative look into things that you need to know about large language models. If you're interested, check out our course on CodeCloud on generative AI, and follow us here on YouTube for more learning like this. Thanks for watching.